Thank you. Thank you. All right, I will keep this uh, brief because uh, as part of my job, I do have the misfortune of having to sit through and watch um, George Osborne deliver his sure. speech in the House of Commons. It's not a task I'd wish on anyone, uh, particularly. And for the last few years, he's always had a slightly nervous air about him, that their grand plan to rescue the economy, that they're going to impose austerity, they're going to do the cuts left, right and centre, they're going to bring down the debt, they close the deficit, they're going to clear up Labour's mess, as they like to put it. For the last few years, he's looked a bit nervous when he stood up there, and it's pretty clear to absolutely everyone that none of this was working. That the pain of the cuts was there, whether it's the bedroom tax, whether it's cuts to disability living allowance, whether it's any of the thousand and one cuts that this government has introduced, the pain was there, with no gain, it would seem, for anyone. And what he had today was for the first time he could stand up and try and look a little bit more confident. That he could stand up and say that Britain was booming, that growth had returned, that everything was just going to carry on getting better and better. And that was George Osborne's big lie for the day. And the reason it's a lie is simple. It's not that growth hasn't returned, it has. The economy is certainly growing. But where are the proceeds of that growth? going to? What's happening to living standards for most of the people, for ordinary people in this country? You're now looking at the longest sustained decline in real earnings for most people, not just in the last hundred years. You have to go back to the 1870s to find a comparable period. You have to look when Queen Victoria was on the throne and this city was racked by cholera before you find a similar period of decline in living standards for most people in this country. So yes, sure, the economy's growing. Certainly, you can go and point at GDP and you can point at job creation and say things are getting better finally, a corner has been turned. But this corner hasn't been turned for most of us. If you look at the jobs created, four out of five of them are in low paid sectors. 80% of the jobs created are in things like retail and catering. These are not secure positions. This is not a secure recovery for most people. So then you ask, where's the growth coming from? And it's very simple. It's very simple and it's probably going to be very familiar to everyone here. If most people are getting worse off, but the economy's growing, first, someone else must be getting that money. It stands to reason. Second, where's, what's driving the growth? They point at the consumption figures. But if people are getting worse off and consumption is rising, what's going on? And there's only one explanation, you can see it as clear as daylight in the figures. What's happening is that yet again we're being forced to pile up debt, and we're being forced to pile up debt to make good the gap in how much people are being paid. And that is what's driving this growth, this so-called boom. It is exactly a decline in living standards, a rise in debt for many millions of people that's fueling this economy along. Exactly the conditions, in fact, that led to the crash of 2008. So nothing about George Osborne's story stands up. Maybe for the bankers, they're quite happy if we're all borrowing. Maybe for the bankers, because they're quite happy getting the proceeds of the growth at the other end of this story. But for most people, it means exactly the same position as ever. And even his own officials admit this. Buried away in the Office of Budget Responsibility forecasts, and you really do have to get quite into it to find them. But tucked away at the back of their forecasts is a nasty little prediction that shows that the government's official forecasters believe that on the best measure of inflation that we have, the retail price index, they don't think real living standards are going to improve for most people until the end of this decade and then some. They don't believe that things are going to get better for most of us. So there's a simple solution, a simple conclusion from all of this. Two things. One, as ever, we have to end austerity. There is no logic, there is no economic rationale to this. This is a smash and grab operation on behalf of the 1% overseen by their friends in the buildings behind us. So end austerity. It hurts us, it hurts people like us. It is not intended to do anything for economy for the likes of us. But also, as Lindsay said, we need to think about an alternative. It's not enough just to say end austerity, everything's going to be great. We have to talk about not just changing how 
bits of the economy work by changing how the whole damn system functions. That a system that's geared towards profit, that's geared towards enriching a few at the expense of the many, is one that's always going to produce crisis, that's always going to produce declining living standards for most of us. So we have to, in the end, think about how we change the whole system. And a step on the way, I think, is ending austerity, making sure we're all there on the 21st of June, that we need a mass movement that can push this government onto the back foot, that can send a signal to Labour, that can say there is an alternative, we're the people fighting for it, we're the people who can make a difference. Thank you.